thoracic cage the thorax is a region of the trunk situated between head and the neck upward and the abdomen downward the thorax is formed by thoracic cage containing the principal organs of number one respiration as lungs trachea and the bronchi number two circulation as heart and the large blood vessels the thoracic cage is formed by thoracic vertebrae and the intervertebral discs posteriorly the sternum and the costal cartilages anteriorly and the ribs on either sides the thoracic cage is connected above with the root of the neck through thoracic inlet and this is the thoracic cage showing here the thoracic inlet connected with the root of the neck and this is thoracic outlet closed by the diaphragm thoracic cage above connected with the root of the neck and the thoracic inlet is bounded by first the thoracic vertebra posteriorly and upper part of the manubrium sterni anteriorly and first rib and it is costal cartilage on either sides the thoracic cavity is separated from the abdominal cavity by diaphragm there is connection between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity through three major openings of diaphragm this is the thoracic inlet containing multiple structures tubal structures as esophagus trachea and thoracic duct and vascular structures as internal jugular vein this is the common carotid and brachiocephalic the apex of the lung passes through thoracic inlet to the root of the neck the sternum forming the central part of the of the thoracic wall it is a flat bone and formed by three parts maniobrium sterni body and the void process the maniobrium sterni the up forming the upper border of the sternum sometimes it's called suprasternal notch or jugular notch body of the sternum articulates with the maniobrium at maneuvering sternal joint or sternal angle at the level of the second costal cartilage lower border of the body joins the void process to form the sternal joint it is cartilaginous at the level of the ninth thoracic vertebra the void process lies in the epigastrium and this is the sternum this is upper part maneuvering sterni body of the sternum and this is the void process this is the sternal angle opposite the second costal cartilage the muscles attach it to the sternum to start by maneuvering sterni anterior surface gives the origin to sternomastoid muscle and the pectoralis major then the sternohyoid and the sternothyroid muscles at its posterior surface body of the sternum pectoralis major at the anterior surface sternocostalis muscles at its posterior surface sternopericardial ligaments at the posterior surface also the void process gives the attachment to the following number one external oblique muscle at its anterior surface number two internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscles at its borders number three external origin of the frame at it is posterior surface then linea alba at the tip of the void process the ribs there are 12 pairs of ribs the upper seven pairs are true ribs because they join the sternum the lower five pairs are false ribs they don't join the sternum directly but join each other last two pairs are floating ribs are free anteriorly so the ribs are divided according to the particular features into typical ribs and atypical ribs according to the attachment to the sternum which attach it to the sternum called the true ribs which not attach it direct to the sternum called the false or floating ribs this is the typical rib has posterior end here head neck and the tubercles this is the upper border of the rib blunt the lower border is sharp the anterior end articulate with the costal cartilages the typical ribs each typical rib articulate with 
Number one, bodies of two adjacent vertebrae, corresponding vertebra and vertebra above. The transverse process of the corresponding vertebra. And each typical rib has three parts, posterior end, shaft, and the anterior end. This is, again, the typical rib. This is the head, neck, tubercles of the rib. Atypical ribs. These are first, second, and last three ribs. The first rib upper surface is rough and shows the following features: scalene tubercle for insertion of the scalenous anterior muscle in front of the scalene tubercle for subclavian vein. The groove behind the scalene tubercle for third part of subclavian artery. Lower surface is smooth because it's related to the pleura and the lines. This is the first rib here. This is head, neck, and the tubercles. And this is the upper surface containing here. This is the scalene tubercle. This grooves for subclavian artery and subclavian vein. Intercostal spaces. The intercostal spaces contain the following. Number one, three intercostal muscles. External, internal, and innermost intercostal. Number two, intercostal arteries, anterior and posterior, then intercostal veins, anterior and posterior also. Lastly, intercostal nerves, and it is collateral branches. Arterial supply of the thoracic wall comes from the following. Number one, internal thoracic artery arises from the first part of subclavian artery which gives the following, anterior intercostal arteries, posterior intercostal arteries arises from the thoracic aorta, except the upper two arteries. This is intercostal space, and this is the arteries, posterior intercostal arises from the thoracic aorta. Anterior intercostal arteries for upper six space arises from the internal memory or internal thoracic. And this is the arrangement of the neurovascular bundle and the subcostal spaces. And this is grooves. This is the intercostal vein. First, intercostal artery. Last, intercostal nerve. The vertebral column, there is general consideration is formed by 33 vertebrae separated by intervertebral discs. The vertebral column is classified into seven cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, and five fused sacral vertebrae, forming the sacrum. Coccygeal vertebrae fused four pieces to form the coccyx. Curves of the vertebral column first, the fetus of the, in the intrauterine. The vertebral column is C-shaped with primary concavity forwards. Second forward convex is two convex appear in the childhood. First appears when the child raises his head up, forming a cervical convexity at about fifth month. The second appears when the child walks, forming a lumbar convexity at about 18th month. This is first in the embryo vertebral column is C-shaped, then two convexes appears cervical and lumbar convexes. The thoracic vertebrae form has, this is the body of the vertebra, and this is transverse processes. The, this is laminae united to form the spine. This is the facet here, superior articular process, this is superior articular process, and this is the inferior articular process. Intervertebral discs. Each disc is formed by three parts. Two plates of cartilage and the annulus fibrosis forming the outer fibrous part of the disc. This part is surrounding the nucleus palpusus. Nucleus palpusus is a central gelatinous part enclosed within the center of the annulus Fibrosis. It is a structure that changes by age where it becomes less elastic and it may calcify in old age. It represents the remnants of notochord 
in the embryo. The ligaments connecting vertebrae with each other. Number one, ligaments between the bodies of the vertebrae as anterior longitudinal ligament and posterior longitudinal ligament. Between the vertebral spines as interspinous ligaments between the spines and the supraspinous ligaments between the tips of the spines. Then between the transverse processes of the vertebrae forming intertransverse ligaments. Then between the laminae forming ligamentum velavum. This is the bodies of the vertebrae here. Well, this is the intervertebral discs. Anterior longitudinal ligament here. Then posterior longitudinal ligament here. And this is intertransverse ligaments between transverse processes.